Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to this week's Week in Markets, a review of data and news releases through the week, and of course, what's going on in actual markets, and why not when we're at new all-time highs in equity markets. The sun is shining here in Newcastle, and it's certainly been shining in asset prices this week, and I'm joined by Matt Henderson, our investment manager, to discuss this. Matt, let's dive straight in. What do we think is driving the moves in global equities uh, yeah. this week and also for through the month of May? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Kevin. So we actually think there's a few reasons that have been pushing equity markets higher. So we've just gone through the first quarter earnings season for US companies. And I think, uh, you know, generally uh, conclusions we can draw is that forward guidance. So what companies are saying to investors about the future, that those have been positive and uh, equity markets have liked that guidance, but then also the numbers they've posted on both revenue generation and also profits made have been positive. So markets have liked that. And I think that element that we've spoke about in terms of forward guidance, that's actually starting to filter through into uh, analysts' expectations. So we're seeing earnings revisions move higher. So analysts really looking into the future thinking, what could profits be? What could revenues be? We're seeing them move higher as a result of what these companies have talked about. And I think for us as an investment team, what we found um, quite interesting is that not only is this happening in the US, but we're seeing this broad now globally into places like UK, Europe, Japan, US, um, emerging markets, which is slightly different to what we've seen over the past 12 to 18 months where that's been more focused in the US. Yep, and that's key, that, that sort of broadening, because it was in an economic story, but now it's a market story. And it's good to see the UK is on the cusp, perhaps, of catching up. So let's dive into the UK a bit more. We've had the jobs data for the month of April. What do you think we can take away from that? And also, does it have any impact for the Bank of England and their desire, perhaps, to cut rates in the summer? Yeah, so we have saw unemployment move marginally higher, up to 4.3%. That's only up 0.1%. Um, but what's actually quite supportive for UK growth it's actually some of the data that we've seen come through in terms of wages. So they moved up, up or at 5.7%. If we consider where inflation is at around 3% in the UK, that means the consumer has about 2% real wage growth, which is actually pretty supportive in terms of growth. And of course, you said uh, we saw a small uptick in unemployment. But what's unusual about this cycle is, again, the compensation and the composition of um, um, employment gains. So you've mentioned the, co- the compensation angle. In the composi- composition angle of employment, we're actually seeing a record high in full-time employment. And the, it's the part-time sector which is actually um, seeing a fall in workers there. So unusual, but again, very good for growth, more people in full-time employment. And I think in terms of the Bank of England, you know, I don't think that this data print will really push them away from what they were thinking about. Um, cut will probably come in the summer. Um, and they'll probably move before yeah, the Fed. And noth- nothing for them to worry about. I think the, the unemployment rise they saw, the gradual, was actually in their forecast. So yeah. it's actually something they have been expecting. So fortunately, we're not talking about inflation that much or as much as we would have done, um, say, this time last year. But we did have inflation data out from the US. And I guess at the margins, an encouraging story again. Yeah, I think the theme that we spoke about in these videos and also some of our morning market videos still persists where we're talking about US inflation being stickier than other regions that we're seeing, such as the UK and Europe. So um, headline inflation, that came in at 3.4, core 3.6. So that theme of it being stickier still there. We're still above the Federal Reserve's target, and that's probably why that their rate cut will be further towards the back of the air rather than like over here and in Europe, where we're thinking more in terms of the summer for that first quarter. And I guess there's two two takeaways from this. One is that inflation in Europe and the UK is now lower than in the US, and it's set to go even lower. The other, of course, is the Fed are somewhat unusual in the US, and they target a more nebulous measure of inflation called core PCE, and that also is expected to decline this month. So there may be some room for the Fed to be more encouraging on the path for inflation when they next update us, but no cuts soon they're probably going to be the last of the major central banks to cut. Yeah, we're still seeing that services component of inflation remain elevated. So until we start to see that come down, likely to keep interest rates where they are looking to pull inflation down. And I think just what we've been through recently, the past week or so, Kevin, had our manager interactions. We have. have. If you would like to uh, bring up some of the key takeaways from that. Yeah, so I think, you know, on the whole, managers far more constructive than they were at the start of the year. 
very constructive on the idea that even with inflation sticky around 3%, say that's actually a representation of the services demand you mentioned, Matt, that we're not in the phase where we were 18 months ago where it's supply-side inflation coming from goods or the energy sector. This is very much demand-driven, helped by full employment in all major economies, also helped by the fact that services businesses are really managing their margins well and are able to pass through these, these cost pressures uh, into the services sector. It's a great story for the corporate earnings side, as you've updated. I think most managers acknowledge that. Encouragingly, managers have been adding to the UK. It's the UK stock market which has performed the best over the last month or so, and managers have been adding to that um, for the right reason, not just the idea that the UK can benefit from stronger commodity prices, but also that the UK market is structurally cheap. Um, we have seen an end to earnings revisions and that if we are to see an increase in earnings expectations, the UK stock market could actually do very well, particularly the FTSE 100 and perhaps the All Share where we've got more, more of an involvement from mid-caps. And I think in terms of that positive growth story that you're talking about, we're hearing less and less talk of or the word recession popping yeah. up in some of these calls. Absolutely. I think most recession views, particularly from our managers, have gone and... Um, the, the, if we were to think about the balance of risks, most managers are now just wondering, are rate cuts needed at all, particularly in the US, given the economies are so strong because private sector job growth in the US is very strong. It's very strong here in the UK, obviously. And are rate cuts needed given markets seem so insensitive to interest rates? So it's actually been a constructive update from managers. It's been a very constructive update on uh, economic data. Thank you, Matt, for that. It's been a great month and a great year for equities at all-time highs. Global breadth, it's, it's a fantastic environment for asset prices, really. Um, so thank you for uh, tuning in. Please do like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. And please, if you do have the time, tune in to our podcast this week, which is a Q&A with Neil Rayner. Thank you and take care.